I was in TechCrunch again. It turns out there's like basically two reasons TechCrunch writes about you, and really basically any press. Uh, you want to be in the news, you have some announcement that you want to make, fundraising, etc. Or TechCrunch writes about you without you letting them know about anything, which is typically bad news. And so the layoffs were actually, you know, as I mentioned, like not the worst thing in the world. It was sort of just like part, part of the life of a startup. And I, I really felt like that sort of up into the right thing was going to continue. And, you know, it was just going to have this like trough of sorrow for like three or four years, and then it would be back to, to smooth ship. And no one would ever have to know, you know, I could just sort of like pretend that everything was fine. And then this article comes out. And this sort of like ruined my life because I had always been like this, like, you know, pretty public open person. And but and I was fine. I was like, okay, I'm going to just like be quiet. I'm just going to stop tweeting. Uh, you know, three years later, like I'll be, I'll, I'll start tweeting again. I'll be great. And then I get this email from Matthew. Uh, who's like, hey, I just heard about the layoffs. Uh, we're going to write about it tomorrow. Uh, do you want to comment? And I said something like, I don't know, things are going to be fine. It, but you know, it's just like, it sucked uh, because all of a sudden like this sort of this, this story that I had that I was sort of like this, I was like playing this character in this uh, TV show or something. And then like that wasn't true anymore. And the, the sort of the harder thing about it was I didn't know who knew about this. And so I'd meet with someone and I didn't know like what to communicate to that person about where, like I sort of, I had this story that was in my head I didn't know what was in their head. I didn't want to like talk about the layoffs if they didn't know about it. Uh, and so it was just like this kind of like this dissonance was like grinding, basically grinding at my soul. Gumrod, on the other hand, continued to kill it. This is uh, you know up until uh, December of last year. It's doing even better now. It continues to do something like this, which is like a you know pretty awesome. This is the amount of money that we pay creators every month. Um, and last last month we did like five point eight or nine or something million dollars. This is all open, so you can go on Twitter and see all this stuff. So that you know that sort of puts this other thing in the works of like this company that I'd built, this product that I, that we had built. I shouldn't say I continued to do well, but like I was a failure. But also I didn't know like which story like people you know were like when they thought of Gumroad and me like which one did they see which did they see this one or did they see the TechCrunch article or or what have you and uh living in San Francisco um you know you're meeting a lot of people that are familiar with Gumroad and and and, and my story and they'd seen this article like from three years ago or from seven years ago or who knows what and so I just like like just like had a hard time and I was spending a lot of money on rent and I'd meet with founders, and, and, and I wasn't really recruiting. It was just like awkward, basically. And, and then Trump won the election. And so every conversation I had um, was like a combination of like, I'm not really a startup person anymore, but I am pretending. 